Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of R&K Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this month, this week's project of the week. I have been teaching some seminars, and I realize that a lot of our customers are not clear when we say vector. We This is a vector file, and we make it sound like it's the Holy Grail, and it really is of digitizing. But I want to explain today what is the difference between a vector file or a raster file, like a JPEG, a bitmap, a TIFF, a GIF. So we're going to explore that today in this lesson. So I've got a new piece of paper, and the first thing I'd want to do is show you the visual difference between a raster file, which would be a JPEG, a bitmap, a GIF, a TIFF. We're going to look at that. Now notice, what we've done to make things real easy for y'all is we've given you folders. So you can have one-click wonders. You know how I feel about the one-click wonder. I am going to go into my backdrops library. Now in your backdrops library, these are JPEGs. These are raster files. So I'm going to come in here and we're just going to scroll down and I'm going to scroll down to a cap right here. Let's just select this cap and we're going to open it. Well, perhaps we're going to open it if, if it wants to open for me. Let's see what my issue is. Here we go. Okay. Now this cap is on the screen. Now I'm going to zoom in because I want you to understand what I'm talking about. If I zoom in, I want you to start noticing this is made up of lots of little squares of colors. So even though our software is very good at blending these colors so it doesn't see 50 shades of yellow, a bunch of shades of gray, light yellow, white, bone, gray, you get the idea. So if I were to create a embroidery out of this by selecting the objects in it and turning them into stitches, I might have a rough edge. I might have where it looks like it's missing some or it dips in because it's seeing all these different colors. Now in what we usually work with in our world is JPEG files. If you take a picture of something, if you've got somebody's um, business card, you scan it in, you are always dealing with a JPEG or a bitmap. So now we're going to get another new piece of paper and I want to show you the difference between that and a vector file. Now I'm going to pick this bird and open this bird up. Now if I bring this bird in and let's go ahead and zoom in on the bird. Now I want you to notice there's no squares of color. These are solid, beautiful, clean lines. So if I went in to create stitches out of this section, I'm going to have a beautiful, crisp, pretty edge. I'm not going to have any of that fluctuations in colors and they call it noise and dithering. This is our ideal type of artwork to work with. That's why I'm always so excited about all of our artwork shapes that you see me use so much because they are all vector files. If you go to create in our software, let's say you want to draw something, you can come up here to our artwork tools and I could come in here and draw a line, use a Bezier curve, or if I'm using a pen and tablet, I can draw with picking the pen. We have the Bezier, but these are also going to be vector line images. So when you convert them to stitches, they're going to be perfect. So it's wonderful to work with vector files. But I want to show you tonight how we're going to work with both files. So let's take this one we've got on screen right now which is our vector image. Now this is a bird. I want you to notice in our sequence view, it's already taken all the colors apart in the exact colors they are. And if I drop down by left mouse clicking on our plus, you'll see it tells me, Kathy, this is artwork. It is not stitches. So my job now is to turn this into stitches. Well, with our software, it's so easy because of the one-click wonder. I'm going to select the bird. 
his body. Now it's going to match the color to the closest color in the artwork. That's another joy of vector files. It's going to bring up the color. Now that it is selected, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to come over here to the one click wonders. What kind of stitch do I want the bird's body in? Well, I want it in a standard fill. So I'm simply going to left mouse click on standard fill. You can see it's filled in, it's used pattern one, and it's done by one simple click. Now I could fine tune it by if I wanted a different type fill in it. Say I wanted a random fill in the bird, I could grab that, apply it, and I have filled that part. So if I turn it into a 3D image, you're going to see I've got stitches in that one place. And you'll see in my sequence view, it's telling me, Kathy, that's no longer artwork, that's a fill. So let's go on down the line. Let's select the bird's outline. Now this is all personal preference, which you want to turn it into. But what I want to do with this outline is I want to make it a bean stitch or a run stitch that's a repeat. So I'm going to come down to my one click wonders and I'm going to say let's select this run. Now the minute I selected that you can see in my sequence view it's turned into an embroidery stitch, it's turned into a run. Now everything I could change or fine tune is in front of me. Well I already told you I wanted a bean stitch. I like having the three repeats. Of course you can pick the number of repeats you like. And I want the stitch length just a little longer on this, so I'm going to make it a 3.0. Now once I've changed anything in the properties box, I've got to apply so that goes ahead and, and connects to my design. So now I've got a bean stitch with a three point. Now let's come on down. Let's now do his wing. I'm going to grab the bird's wing. Now I've decided I'm going to put a fancy fill in that bird's wing because I want a little more texture. So instead of picking a standard fill, I'm going to left mouse click and say fancy fill. Now I could look down here and I could look through my fancy fills till I saw something that I liked that I wanted in that, that wing. I could try and look and see if there's something that was kind of feathery. But this is again this is just personal preference and you can see you have got so much to pick from. So we're just going to pick anything, I don't care, let's just pick, um, well let's pick the, the fish scale sideways. And I'm going to apply. So now that kind of looks like feathers, I like it. Again the next item here is an outline around that. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my run stitch again turn that into a run. One click wonder. Let's go ahead and make it a bean. Since my other bean is at three, I'm going to make this the same by applying. So now I have a nice little run stitch around that. Our next object is his eye. Now the eye, I'm going to use a balanced a satin, an auto satin. So if we come into all of our different types of satins that we could pick, with a one click wonder, I'm going to pick the auto satin. So I know that's going to be a beautiful, pretty, balanced satin on his eye right there. With that, the next thing I've got is his tail feathers. Now I'm looking at these tail feathers and I can see these two are thin and this one's kind of a satin stitch look. So in our sequence view, Let's click on our plus with a left mouse click and let's look at our artwork pieces. So we have the three distinct pieces of artwork within that color. So I'm going to select the first one by left mouse clicking on it and I'm going to say I want you to be a run. And I'm going to make this, when I've made this a run, I'm going to make it a double run. And I'm going to apply. I'm going to select the next piece of artwork. So I've selected that. I'm again going to select run and I want it to be a double run. I want it to look the same. And apply. Now this last little piece of artwork, having trouble with it staying stuck to my cursor, this last piece of artwork, 
I want to make that a steel stitch. It's a nice little balanced satin that runs equidistant down the center. So I'm going to select steel. Now I can see that is much too bulky. But look, the minute I select steel, everything I can do came up. So what I don't like is the width. Now Walter has taught us a satin cannot be any more narrow than 1.5 millimeters. So I'm not going to go any smaller than that in the width because I don't want problems if I put this on a knit t-shirt. So I'm going to apply. So now we have created a design from vector artwork very simply. Select your object, decide what type of stitch you want, and then if you want to fine tune in your properties box, how simple was that? Now going back to this cap, this cap is not that simple if I try to do it section at a time. Well fortunately in Floriani artwork, and I could, I could use my wand and I could take this magic wand and I could work with each and every section individually. However, we have done something revolutionary with our auto digitize. For those of you that have followed me through the past few years, you know that if you're ever at my seminars and stuff, I never talk about auto digitizing because it's never really worked well. The way it was always done, it has always been done in this industry, has been it's looking at a JPEG and it's following JPEG lines. So that's where the problem came in. Well, we have come up between DJ Walt and our engineers, they've figured out how to auto digitize where it actually will make this a vector image prior to doing it. So it's going to clean it up and clean those lines so it really comes up very nice. So what I would do is I would have a new piece of paper and I would come right here. These are our wizards. You notice there's a little down arrow so let's left mouse click and let's select the auto digitizing wizard. Now it says Kathy where do you want to get that image? So I'm going to go to select image. It's taking me into that same folder that I just showed you that's on your toolbar. But using the wizard I've got to come this direction. So we're going to come down and we are going to pick the cap. Same thing and I'm going to say open it. Now we're going to go to next. Now the first thing we've got to do here is we have to decide the width we want our cap to be. Now you always size your artwork prior to creating stitches. You're not going to create stitches and then size it up and down. Decide what you want. Now I want this cap to be about three inches across. I happen to know there's 25 millimeters to an inch, so three quarters. Now that I've resized it, and of course it sized the height proportionately, I'm going to go to next. Now it's telling me that it's going to digitize certain colors. I'm happy. It sees five colors is what it sees. It sees the white, the red, the yellow, the blue, and the black. Now when I go to next, it's going to tell me that it's not going to do the white because it realizes that is the background and we don't want to necessarily digitize the background I just want the cap. Now if I did let's say I did want that background let's say I'm making a patch and I want that white background to stitch I would check this box and it would turn the white into stitches as well. Now when I go to next it's asking me what do you want? You want to minimize jumps or color changes? Well I only have the four color changes. I always want it to lock stitch and I want it to trim if the stitch is over five millimeters. So that's perfect. And you do have these choices always trim at. So you have the choices to tell it. If you're not sure just leave it at the default. I'm now going to finish. Now it has done the cap for me. How cool was that? But notice these lines are nice and pretty and clean. Why? Because my program took that JPEG image and made it vector before it actually changed it into stitches. Now I am going to show you 
because I may not like exactly how it did things. So let's look at this. I'm looking and I don't like necessarily the different angles. So let's pick the bill of the cap. Let's select it. And with it selected, I'm going to come. Let me get the bill of the cap. Excuse me. I want the bill. I don't want the bill and the ball. I like the, I like the top fine. I just want to grab the bill of the cap. Now when I select that, notice on my left hand toolbar, my shape icon is available. I'm going to left mouse click on it. And now what it has done, it has added in all the control points so I can change the shape, the start and stop. But what I want to change is the angle of those stitches. I don't like it. So I'm going to put my cursor on the edge, right mouse click, and tell it I want to edit just the angle lines, the inclination line. Now I can see it. You see this little black circle here and the black circle here. I am going to grab that, that's the angle, and I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to grab the top of it. I want the stitches to follow that angle. I'm going to hit enter, and now my stitches have changed angle. I love the way that looks versus how it looked before. It looked kind of chopped up. So by changing the angle, I have fixed the bill of this cap. Now the same thing, I don't like the angle on the blue. So let's select the blue. You can see the angle line. Now I showed you how to get rid of all these other control points by simply right mouse clicking and say edit only the inclination. You don't have to do that. You could still edit the inclination whether it was there or not. So what I'm going to do is I want this to go more like the red is I like this angle. So I'm going to follow the angle that's on my red section. Enter. And now I'm going to select the yellow. And I'll show you. See, we could change this inclination line. Whether I click on the outline and say, just let me do it. It just makes it easier if any of the blue boxes, which are your, your shape lines, or your start and stop, which might get in your way. So now I'm going to change. Now I think that cap looks much better. So you can bring in a JPEG image through your auto digitize wizard. Then if you don't like something about it, fine tune it. I'll show you one other thing and then our lesson's over for the night. Let's say I didn't like the shape of the bill of the hat. Let's say it was the artwork had a little mar in it or something. I could come in here and grab these outlines and I could reshape it however I wanted it by just moving them around and I could hit enter and now I have also changed the shape of an object. So how easy is it? Vector files rock. But through Floriani, you can bring in a JPEG go th going through your auto-digitizing wizard and still have a pretty good result. You may have to do some fine-tuning, but how wonderful is this? Well, I want to thank you to c for coming to this week's Project of the Week. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned. And I look forward to seeing you next week.